Bula. Okay, those of you who don't know it, that's how you greet your friends in Fiji. Magandang umaga. Good morning. Welcome to the First United Methodist Church in Torrance. Whether you are joining us for the first time, or if you've been coming here for a long time, or if you're just joining us for the first time on the internet, or being or joining us in, on the internet for a long time, know that you are always welcome here. This is home, wherever you are and whoever you are in your journey in faith. Torrance First United Methodist Church welcomes you every time. This is Palm Sunday or Passion Sunday, as some churches call it. And today we celebrate the uh, triumphal entrance of Jesus into Jerusalem. We know that the children will be singing Hosanna. And for those of you who really do not know what the meaning of the word is, Hosanna means help us or save us, we pray. For those of us who've read the gospel for a long time already, we seem to think that this is a word of praise, and it is, but it is also a prayer for salvation. Now, just a few reminders. If you have your mobile devices or your cell phones with you, please place them on silent mode so that we don't get distracted while we are in worship. And also, if you have prayer concerns or joys that you want lifted up, just fill up the pink cards and the pew racks or place them on the comment section if you're on the internet and we'll get them to the pastor in time. Also, just a request. For those of you who are driving here and you're able to walk, please, if you could, park a little further away so that those of us who drive and can barely walk, that they will be able to park closer and not have to walk a long way to the church. So with that, Shalom Aleichem, Salam Aleikum, the peace of Christ be with you always. Let us pass the peace of Christ to one another. And to prepare ourselves for worship, let us join together in the responsive call to worship. We come to prepare for the holiest of weeks. Jesus leads us through this week, and we will follow, for he is the life we long for. He is the word who sustains us. Setting aside all power, glory, and might, he comes modeling humility and obedience for all of us. Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is the one who brings us the kingdom of God. Now, if you are able, please rise for the singing of the opening hymn.
celebrate Easter, of course, with egg hunting. Um, a lot, lot of chocolates and candies are prepared for the kids to have fun. But at the same time, we are having a teacher's training online. I will send you out the link if you sign up. And please, please consider joining us for the teacher's training for the next season after Easter so we have a lot of fun together. Now, please um, let us welcome Rejoice Singers. They practice every Sunday, every Sunday, 1035, in the Sunday school classroom. We practice um, under Miss Lynn, Miss Fincy, Miss Cleta, Mr. Renee, and James, and we have a special guitarist today, Sophia. Please welcome them with one. Yeah, just uh, stay there. Just a quick, quick lesson. How you doing? You don't know what you're doing, right? What's going on? Okay, guys. Thank you for all the beautiful praising song. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, just one thing. What's the meaning of Hosanna? That's one thing that you need to learn today. What's the, why we say Hosanna? Because, yeah, well, there's a special meaning to it. Hosanna, what's that mean? Because, praise, praise the Lord. 
That's hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord is hallelujah. Hosanna. Come on. You can do better than that. Yeah, save us. Help us. Have you ever said it to your parents? You know, you need help? Dad, help me, right? Dad, help me. Mom, help me. You know? That's Hosanna. So when Jesus came into the gate of Jerusalem, people shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna. That means save us, save us, right? Okay? So you have to know, every Palm Sunday, we shouted Hosanna, Hosanna. We're celebrating this Palm Sunday. But we have to know the definition, the meaning of Hosanna, right? So what is the definition of Hosanna? Save us, right? Okay. Thank you. Let us pray. God, we're so grateful for our children and youth in our church. We ask you to bless them with your abundance. Give them your wisdom and knowledge so that as they grow up, they know you better. They are living in a, a good Christian life with the teaching that we teach here in our church. God, guide them with your spirit, especially in this time, in this day, it's really hard to find the right way. So be with them and guide them. Thank you for all the blessings and guidance upon our church, upon our children. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, guys, thank you. Okay. <laughs> wow. So much enthusiasm. <clears throat> Good morning, church. Good morning. Okay. Yeah, you better do <laughs> Okay, how are you doing? Good. We're doing all right? Okay, okay. Announcement. Uh, altar flowers today from two families. Uh, celebration of Patty's 48th birthday on March 25th. <laughs> Happy birthday, Patty. And James' birthday. James turned 18, March 26th. Right, right. Big 18, wow. Yeah. And today's refreshment provided by the celebration of Sue's birthday on March 29, 8, 28. Okay. 28. Big 8 O. Woo. Right. So we have a whole family came there. Would you please stand? All right. Welcome. What? All right. We can do better than this, okay? Every time. From our heart, just pour out to them, all right? Okay, let's welcome. Thank you, thank you. So, okay. And uh, we are still in March, right? Okay, that means we're still, uh, you know, this Mar the month of March is we are supporting Toberman, uh, Toberman Neighborhood Center. So if you want to donate financially, and you can write a check and then say Toberman support, okay? Thank you. And this is Holy Week uh, that we gonna gather a little more. Like uh, Thursday, we're gonna have a service at seven o'clock with a communion. Friday, four o'clock, Good Friday service. So write down, okay? You need to come, okay? So Thursday, seven o'clock here, and then Friday, four o'clock here, we're gonna have a Good Friday service. And then Easter Sunday, that's a tomorrow, next Sunday is Easter Sunday, okay? Okay, did I miss anything? 
Okay. Choice and consent. Okay, I'm going to read a, a note from Sue. Okay. It is with joy and gratitude that I celebrate my 80th birthday on 28th of March. Thank you, family, for coming today to help me celebrate with my church family. Yeah, that's nice. I wish to give a flower to all the women who are 80 and above <laughs> as we form a kinship of God's grace and blessings. Please join us for cake. So after, you know, worship service, we all go to social hall and celebrate Sue's birthday. Okay? Okay, we have a couple more people celebrating birthday. Amy, birthday, when? Today. Yay, happy birthday. And John Sainis birthday yesterday, March 23. Where's John? <laughs> happy birthday. Okay, and then Patty's birthday. Uh, happy birthday, Patty. Paul put it in, okay? Make sure he put it in, okay? Okay, and we have another welcome. Jean and Angela Degur's men. They recently got married. Where? Would you please stand? Welcome. <laughs> there was a beautiful wedding service. Okay. And that's it. Any other joys and concern? Huh? Oh, spring cleaning. Okay, I'm going to make an announcement. Board of Trustee has a schedule, spring cleaning on April 6th, Saturday, right? Saturday. Saturday, 9 to 12. So bring you all your equipment from your garage, <laughs> and then we're going to clean up our church together. Okay? We're going to have lunch. Yeah, we're going to have a lunch. That's important. After we, at 12 o'clock. Okay. So we're gonna have a really nice lunch too. So I'll take okay. care of that lunch. Okay, thank you. Ready? Thank you. Any other joys and concern? Oh, please pray for well, continue to pray for my father. Uh, yesterday my brother called me that uh, now my father has COVID. Uh, yeah, with a, he's struggling with so many health issues right now, but not COVID, but uh, yeah. So uh, pray for my father, please. Any other joys and concern we lift up this morning? Okay, let us pray. Loving God, we are so grateful for this beautiful day that you allow us to live. God, we are your children, and you provide your care and support and love for our lives. Help us, God, to to fully embrace the love that you provide through cross. We are celebrating this Lenten season and Holy Week about your love, about your forgiveness. So God, help us to fully embrace the forgiveness that you provide for us through the cross. God, this morning we lift up to you many of our church family members spoken or unspoken. Many of our church family members dealing with this difficult and hard situation. You know all the details. God, provide you a true presence among them. God, provide your strength among them so that they can get through all these difficult times. Let them feel your presence, oh God. Let them experience amazing healings that you provide for them. Most of all, let them feel your spirit so that we can feel the joy and excitement each and every day that you allow us to live. 
Thank you, God, for the, so many blessings and guide us upon our lives, especially for our church. Help us to discern the ways that we need to go, oh God. Help us to put our hearts and hands together to do your ministry for your people. God, be with us this morning as we put our heart to this worship service. Help us to feel your presence throughout this worship so that we can recharge ourselves as we go to the, this world. Thank you for the, all the blessings of God. So church, let us continue prayer with the prayer that Jesus Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. <coughs> Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and glory forever. Amen. The ushers come forward, please.
Please join me in the prayer of dedication. Almighty and everlasting God, as we bring our gifts and lay them at your altar, we remember the crowds in Jerusalem who laid their cloaks on the road, shouting Hosanna as Jesus passed. We know they were looking for a Messiah who was different from sent Jesus to be, not one of political power and military might, but one who came in compassion and mercy to heal, love, and save. Search our hearts that we might be confident that the Messiah for whom we long is the one you know we need, Jesus Christ, your anointed one, in whose name we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading is from Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 1 to 7. You shall love the Lord your God, therefore, and keep his charge, his decrees, his ordinances, his commandments always. Remember today that it was not your children who have not known or seen the, disi the discipline of the Lord your God, but it is you who must acknowledge his greatness, his mighty hand, and his outstretched hand. His signs, his deeds that he did in Egypt to Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, and to all his land, what he did to the Egyptian army, to their horses and chariots, how he made the water of the Red Sea flow over them as they pursued you, so that the Lord has destroyed them to this day. What he did to you in the wilderness until you came to this place, and what he did to the Tan and Abiram, sons of Eliab, son of Reuben, how in the midst of all Israel, Israel, the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them up. Along with their households, their tents, and every living being in their company. For it is your own eyes that have seen every great deed that the Lord did. The word of the Lord.
Yeah. Uh, we still have opportunity to you join the choir. Are you listening? Anybody out there? Okay. Can you hear me? Okay. An old man was wondering if his wife had a hearing problem. So one night, he stood behind her while she was sitting in her comfort chair. He soft spoke softly to her, honey, can you hear me? There's no response. And he moved a little closer and said, Honey, can you hear me? Still, there's no response. Finally, he moved right behind her and said, Honey, can you hear me? And she said, For the third time, yes. <laughs> so he's the one actually had a hearing problem. Church, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Today's the last Sunday in Lent. And the last Sunday, we talk about the purposes based on the book's Purpose Driven Life and the Purpose Driven Church. It is, of course, the last Sunday we talk about it to remember what we have learned. So we're going to conclude today as we celebrate Palm Sunday, moving toward Easter, revisiting this purpose that we sometimes miss. In Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 2 says, Remember today what you have learned about the Lord through your experience with him. Remember. So today we're going to look at what we have learned about God, about ourselves, about life, about growing, about the church, all those things. So we're going to stay here overnight, okay? When we talk about purpose, we also, all these things about God, ourselves, and church, all the things included. That's why we are talking about purpose that changes our lives, changes our church. Today is a perfect example. If we don't focus on the purpose, if we don't align correctly with the right purpose, we ended up in a totally wrong place. That's a perfect example today. Today is Palm Sunday, right? Imagine all these people 2,000 years ago at the gate of Jerusalem, people gathered there shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna. What they're thinking? All these people shout, Hosanna, Hosanna, save us, save us, help us, help us. What their purpose as they're looking at Jesus? As they are looking at Jesus entering Jerusalem, what were they thinking? What they want? What about disciples? who are marching with Jesus Christ, being with Jesus Christ for three years. How do you feel about Jesus Christ passing through this gate of Jerusalem? What they were thinking? Maybe they were thinking that this Jesus Christ will save us from Roman soldiers. That's the Messiah that they are expecting, they are waiting for. But we all know 
Jesus Christ was heading to the cross. All this total, totally different understanding of the purpose. Understanding of purpose as Jesus was heading to the cross. All this misunderstanding will end up abandoning Jesus at the cross. So once Jesus was arrested on this coming Thursday, after they had a really nice meal together, they all scattered. They all ran away. You know, that's the result of not aligning aligning with the purpose of Jesus Christ. Not knowing the fact that Jesus was heading to the hill on the cross. Not knowing the purpose would lead people to a totally different direction. Today's the example. Church, we have been journeyed together, reminded of our purpose. Maybe we've been talking about last several weeks, the purpose that we already knew. The purposes that we already knew, but not exactly or fully understood. Not exactly or fully leave it out. So today we're going to talk about the purpose. And today's the last Sunday we're going to talk about. I really pray that through this Lenten journey of revisiting the purposes will lead us into the right direction of our church, the right direction of our lives. You know, we are living in this generation they're really hard to find the right direction because of all the things happening, right? All the chaotic situation, all the uncertainty situation that we are dealing with each and every day in our society. It's really hard for us to find the right direction. But having the purpose, having the right alignment with the purpose will lead us to the right direction in our church, and in our lives. So let's remember what we have learned. So we're going to talk about all the things that we learned. So it's going to be... The first thing we learned is about about God. It's all about God, not me. The maker, the creator, defines the purpose, right? That makes sense. The maker, the creator, defines the purpose. This is the most basic and fundamental truth we have to learn about life. The life is about, not about you, it's about God. The creator create you and me for a special purpose. The purpose that creator has. And you were made to live with God forever in eternity. That's the first thing we learned. The second thing we learned is that you were created to be loved by God. To be loved by God. This is the creator clearly defines our existence. Not the circumstances define us. Not all the situation, hard situation surrounding us will define us. Not. Only our creator clearly defines us. And it's stated in the Bible. The Bible tells me so. 
You were created by, to be loved by God. God created us in order to love us. And before you remember anything else, you have to understand this is what on earth you are here for, to be loved by God. And we learn that we are put on earth for some special purpose. Number one, the relationship with God. The Bible word for it, the relationship with God. Remember the word? Worship. Worship is just the way we react Worship is the way that we respond to God. In Romans chapter 12 says, take your everyday, ordinary, ordinary life, you're sleeping, you're eating, you're going to work, you're walking around, all this around your life, and place it before God as an offering. We know offering is the essential part of worship service. But think about it. As you pray, God, I'm offering my life to you. Offering. Real purpose-driven living doesn't happen in this church, in our church. It happens in our ordinary, routine things of real life wherever you go. For example, God, I'm going to take out garbage for you. What? Maybe you can teach your children as you do Jesus Christ. You can clean your garage to the glory of God. I know some of you have to do it, right? Everything, everything can be turned into an act of worship. The thing is, if we put our heart into it, I'm going to do it for you, oh God, whatever I'm doing. And when you do that, then your life, your ordinary routine life become an act of worship. That's worship. The next purpose in life is fellowship. Remember fellowship? The love extend to our God's family, loving God's family. One of the greatest privilege you will ever be offered in life is the pri privilege of being part of God's family. We are God's family. So we have to be taught to love. And the church, the family of God is where you learn to love real life. As we gather, we learn to love each other. We're not ideal people. We have brokenness, but we learn to love each other. The next purpose of life, we call discipleship, to grow like Jesus Christ. When we trust God in trouble, and obey God in temptation and forgive those who trespass against us to grow more like Jesus Christ. It is worth the cost of us for us to grow to be more like Jesus Christ through troubles, through temptation, and trespasses. That's what we call discipleship. And the next purpose of life is to serve God by serving others. That's what we call ministry. You are all ministers, not just me, good-looking Asian pastor. We are all ministers. Remember? And God particularly shaped shape us through spiritual gifts, through heart, through abilities, through personalities, and experience. S-H-A-P-E. God shaped us. 
but we have to do it. We're not just sit around and do nothing. We have to do, do the discipleship as they God expect us to do it, right? And the next purpose to share the good news uh, is to share the good news. We call it evangelism. Church, we are in a business of saving lives. We're not in a business of entertainment. We are in a business of saving lives. We are, evangelism is a business of helping pe people open their eyes to see the world that they never seen it before. Through our action, through our lives, people be able to see Jesus Christ. People able to see the new world that they have never seen it before. So we could be Christ to our neighbors. We could be Christ to our friends. That's evangelism. We are to humble ourselves to give loving service to the world in a manner of the Christ. So that's what we learn during this time of Lenten season. So now what? Now what? I read a note, uh, I found a note that explained perfectly the, the point that I would try to make today. So I'm going to read to you. Note to self. What is my purpose in life? I asked the void. What if I told you that you fulfill it when you took an extra hour to talk to that kid about his life, said the voice. Or when you paid for that young couple in the restaurant. Or when you saved that dog in traffic. Or when you, when you tied your father's shoes for him. Your problem is that you equate your purpose with goal-based achievement. The universe isn't interested in your achievement, just your heart. When you choose to act out of kindness, compassion, and love, you are already, you are already aligned with your true purpose. No need to look any further. That's what Note said. Not expecting a lot of things, but just to act out. Out of kindness, out of compassion, your love that you have. As I close the message, Holy Sermon series today, I want you to remember just one thing. If you, you cannot remember anything else, I really want you to remember this. You were created to be loved by God. You were created to be loved by God. That's the most important thing. I read a story about a woman got into the car accident. There's a woman uh, uh, passing too close and hit a, a fender with her car. Both cars stopped, and this young woman serving the damage was with a tears, crying, because it was her fault. She admitted. And the thing is, it was a new car. Just get out of the, uh, the showroom. And she's crying. How can I face my husband? You know? 
this, uh, the other person was very sympathetic, but explained that they need to exchange the information, like a driver license and insurance information. And so the woman reached out to the Glow comp component uh, to, to her car and get an envelope, to try to get a document in an envelope. And then she opens it. The first paper that she saw in her husband handwriting saying, honey, in case of accident, please remember, it is you I love, not the car. It's hard to believe it, man, right? <laughs> I'm just saying. It is you I love. So please remember, if you forget everything else, please remember that you were created to be loved by God. It is you that God loves. It is important to remember that foundational purpose that our creator, our maker has. God created you to love you. Let us pray. Loving God, since life is preparation for eternity, we want to use our time on earth fulfilling your purpose for us. Help us, God, to discern the purpose that you have for us. Help us to fully engage with the purpose that we learn during this time of Lenten season. So God, empower us with your spirit so that we can follow your way to fulfill the purpose for us. Thank you for the message, and thank you that you challenge us through the message. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Would you please stand as we sing together, closing him? I found this benediction, so I'm going to read to you. A week where transformation will meet you. And now, church, go forth to a week where transformation will meet you and guide you. Do not hide when they recognize you. Do not doubt when you see Christ. Do not deny when you are confronted. Do not stop until you are at
the cross. And there we will see the light. And the burdens of your heart will roll away. Until then, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen.